Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. So, lockdown's finally got to me. We've finally done it. We've cleaned up the fish room a little bit. So, this was inspired mainly by some DIY stuff that I had to do. So, down here, um, I wanted to get the washing machine and the tumble dryer out of the kitchen to get them out of the way because they did some work in the kitchen and that makes that all a bit nicer. And I thought I had to get rid of this whole rack to be able to do that because I didn't think I could fit both in down there. Um, but in the end, so I drained this tank down and moved all the fish out of it and then that actually made it light enough that I could just manhandle the whole rack. So I've just moved the whole, back, whole rack out a few inches this way. So I've still got enough room here and so as I can shut the door, for instance, it just fits and then that gives me just enough room to get this, these two in underneath. So that allowed me to keep this tank. So if you've been following along and if you haven't, click that subscribe button and you won't miss any updates. I posted that I was breaking down a tank um, and this was the tank that I thought was breaking down because I had to get rid of it. But I didn't really mind because this tank is really on its last legs. Um, it's had more patches than, I can't think of a good simile or metaphor there. It's had a lot of patches and it's, it's really just held together with hope and duct tape, quite literally in some cases. But it's a good sized tank so it's a bit of a shame to get rid of it really so I thought I'll keep it and I have some plans for this tank in a while. At the moment I've just got a couple of big mahusive sponge filters in there. Uh, there's a few snails and stuff. I've sifted out the sand and the gravel. There's a bit more gravel to be sifted out in there. Um, but it's just about ready to go. And um, we've just been running it through, making sure it's still okay after me shifting it and moving it all around. Um, so we'll come back to this. We'll talk about this in a minute. So what that means is, Mr. Goldfish here, I think my daughter's called him, him or her, Penelope. Um, he was in this tank here, so I've moved him into here temporarily, which freed up this larger tank for, well, approximately half of the things that were in this tank. So this is all the bristle noses, the babies. There's still some shrimp in there. Um, a few breeding groups of bristle nose in here. And also, if you can see that, a little tiny uh, baby Daniel. So if I hadn't moved that around, I wouldn't have noticed that. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so yes, we've got the, the Danios have bred, and there's a little baby there, so I'm hoping they'll continue to do so. All the bristle nose, well, half of the bristle nose are still in here. Uh, and there, there's tons of babies in here. But the gravel's a bit dodgy, so it's really hard to see them. Not dodgy, it's just a weird color, so it's very hard to see the really small any babies, but yeah, we moved them all across, loads of snails as well. Moved a bunch more in here to this tank, so this was the tank that was meant to be the planted tank and it just had uh, two bristlenose in there, which bred into hundreds of bristlenose. So I've just added a few more adults into here, and a few more hides and stuff, and again you can see some of the smaller ones um, just hanging out in here. But it's, it's one of these tanks that the longer you stare at it, the more you see in here and again because the substrate's quite dark here you can't really see the dark ones but you see the white ones the albinos and the, the lemons quite well um, and again loads of cherry shrimp in here too so loads of action loads of babies all over the place what i've actually done is just split all the bristle noses that were in that big tank across all the tanks almost i haven't put any in here because i want this to remain a cold water tank for this guy, or cooler water. Um, and here we've got the rams. I've just cleaned this a little bit so it's a bit cloudy at the minute. Why is that so bright? Sorry about that, I had the IOSO settings wrong. So yes, the rams are in here. Um, they've made themselves a little, well, it's a bit cloudy as I said because I've just cleaned it. Um, but they've made themselves a couple of caves by knocking everything over over there. So I'm interested to see whether or not there's something in there because there has been some action going on between these two, but we'll see. And then over here, obviously, we've still got the discus pair. They're still doing good. Nothing from them yet. I think they know that I've made uh, <laughs> a whole playlist for them and a whole 
a breeding vlog, so they've decided to put a halt to proceedings. Just to toy with my emotions. But they're still looking good, still feeding well. Uh, I've put a load of the baby snails and baby bristle noses in all these tanks. And these tanks up here, I've done the same again. I've got all my guppies, I've consolidated all my guppies into this tank. Um, and a couple of baby bristles. I basically put bristle noses everywhere across the whole place. So you'll notice there's a bit of a gap there. And that was me being clumsy. In fact, I'll show you what happened to this tank. What I did was I was trying to cleaning it out, moving things around, and managed to crack the front pane of glass. I'll show you that. So the broken one's out here. Well, because I don't know where else to put it at the moment while well, I decide what to do with it. But, yeah, big crack all the way down. Well, almost all the way down. So I swithered about whether to cut all the silicon away and replace this panel or just chuck it all together. Or what I could do, and what you might see in the next video is the same as I've done for this tank. This tank I've smashed both sides here and patched them with this. Um, so this one has just got some offcuts of perspex or um, what do you call it? Acrylic material that I've just patched in place and then I've put a skin on the inside as well. And to be fair, and that's on both sides because I'm extremely clumsy. That's held up for the best part of three or four years now. I'm always waiting for this tank to just disintegrate and fall apart, but it hasn't happened yet. So in my next video, and click subscribe if you haven't already, if you don't want to miss it, I'll probably have a go at patching that other small tank. And because it's such a small tank from down here, um, there's really not much in the way of masses of pressure or anything like that to to worry about so it won't be the prettiest but it'll still work so that brings us back to this tank again and what we're going to do with it um, if you've been following along for a while I've, I've always been interested in snake heads so that's what I'm thinking for this tank here but I'm thinking that if I get a really big bit of wood and a few plant pots and do potted plants rather than trying to grow any plants in the substrate that's probably going to be a bit more um, achievable. I've not decided what type of snake head I want to do, I'm still researching all the various types um, because there are some that you can have, that you wouldn't have it heated at all, that would just be um, seasonal. Oi! Shush! So you have to go through the, the various seasons to get the best out of them so they like it to be a bit cooler during winter and then warm up to summer and then drop again um, whereas others do like it tropical. Um, various different types, lots of really interesting fish actually. They're just usually just seen as a horrible invasive species um, but I, I think they're really cool and certainly some of them look so stunning when you see them. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'll be able to get any of them but you know it's a good sized tank this, a good four foot tank thinking big bit of um, bog wood or something along those lines even though it's really hard to get anything like that at the moment um, that would look really good especially with a few potted plants so I'm going to move some plants down here and put them in the pots and show you how I do that so this is a method I've used a few times before you just get a few terracotta pots make sure you get the real terracotta ones because if you get the plastic ones they end up floating usually um, and just some regular potting soil Try and get the, the one with no additives if possible. Um, but I quite like this. A couple of handfuls of potting salt. Make sure you put the first one in quite firmly because they tend to have holes in the bottom. So if you pack that, it kind of minimises the mess that it makes. And I'm going to a couple of good handfuls for a pot that size. Just for the soil. And then I've scavenged some plants. So I've got some Amazon sword here that I've scavenged from one of my plants, uh, one of my tanks upstairs. I just like to, when you're replanting something, just take the roots. So the roots start here and go all the way down to here. I like to kind of pinch them off about halfway. It seems to stimulate some growth. And then when you're doing it like this, 
just kind of make a little divot with your finger, poke them in, pack that in fairly loosely, and I've got a bucket of just normal gravel here, and then I'm just going to top that up with gravel. And just topping this up, it tends to give you a better start because you just won't have all the soil floating around in the tank. There you go, so a plant that size, that's a kind of good sized pot there. Smaller plants, smaller pots. The bigger the pot you give, the more chance you've got to leave it to grow before you have to think about repotting it. A pot that size. I probably won't ever have to repot this plant unless it gets humongous. I mean, these do get quite big. But I can just put that straight in the tank now. Similar with the smaller plants, I've got a bunch of sisiflora here. Um, this is stuff that will just grow forever and I'll just keep trimming it. But same sort of thing, handful of potting compost. Pack it in quite tightly. a bit more on top, put a little hole in and then I can grab the rooty dens and just put them in there lightly, pack it down and then some gravel to cap it off. So the gravel as well as stopping the soil escaping Stops your plants escaping as well when you first put them in. So, just like that. And it's a case of putting them in. So this tank here is a little bit weird because I've not got much room there. So I tend to go in from the side. And then along to where I want it. Just let the water in. Very little soil gets in the way that way. Same thing with this one. Just drop it in gently. Let it soak up. There we go, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to put in a few plants at the moment. I might put in a few more. That was just to show you the kind of technique that I'm going for. The good thing about this is if you get a bit bored with your plant placement, it's literally just a case of moving them around so you don't have to dig anything up and destroy your tank if you want to rearrange things. So I'm going to put a few of these in here. Keep my eye open for some good, nice, um, striking bits of bogwood, I guess is what I'm looking for. A big centerpiece piece. Um, and if I do end up getting snakeheads, I think that'll work really well because they'll be in and out. Um, give it a really good really good basis for the tank I'm not looking for well I'm undecided really some snakeheads are only the species on these tanks you don't want to think about putting in anything else I don't know if I want that in this case um, if I do want a species only or if I want to put in something else you see some videos on the internet I mean go and search them up after this there's some really beautiful ones uh, and there's some quite conflicting advice out there on the internet where they'll say it definitely has to be species only and then you'll see that species in a tank there's a bunch of angel fish, a bunch of rainbows, a bunch of tetras, really small fish you think well if that's the case why are they not getting eaten up? so who knows but yes I shall continue messing around on this and that's about it for this one I think we'll leave it there thank you very much for watching and if you haven't already click that subscribe button it really helped me out um, this close to 8,000 subscribers at the moment, so you could tip me over the edge. Thank you very much, and I'll see you later. Bye!